What's up guys, welcome back. Apologies for no vlog last week. I really wanted to do one. It just got, the week got away from me. I had family down. I was editing the Metcon review against the Metcon 7 versus the Metcon 8. I had new clients started and it just got away from me, but I'm really committed to bringing out more videos again. And I did get more videos, it just wasn't necessarily a vlog. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Anyway. A bunch of you have reached out to me very kindly, thank you, I appreciate it, asking how the knee is doing. So if you didn't see the last video, there'll be a link up here, um, but basically I had something going on with my knee and it was, I couldn't bring my heel to my bum and we were thinking meniscus, so my buddy Sam and he's like, give it 10 days, the inflammation should go down. He was correct, it did go down, I do have movement and everything that I had before now. I have a little bit of discomfort every so often and I have a bit of clicking when I go up the stairs. So I'm thinking I've probably got some kind of meniscus or cartilage stuff going on. But I have skateboarded, snowboarded, crossfit, done sports my whole life. It's probably to be expected. Um, and depending on, if it doesn't go in the next few months, I'll probably just get an MRI and have a look at it. Uh, but all this is gearing towards this jiu-jitsu competition that I have happening at the end of this month. Weight loss has been going really well. Slow down as expected, but really well. Apart from yesterday, we had a, a Domino's pizza because the Euro European Championships of Football was on. And the Lionesses, the ladies won, brought it back. They were incredible. The goals were that little chip. Oh, thing of beauty. Anyway, my, my wife said, look, you know you can get a lower calorie Domino's. And I was like, what? And she goes, yeah, thin crust. It's way better. So we got it. Apparently 500 calories. I don't believe there's a 500 calorie pizza. But anyway, it was on tortilla, basically. And it tastes a bit burnt. So if you're going to have a pizza, have a damn pizza. Um, however... At least I had a pizza that I didn't really enjoy and it was only 500 calories, opposed to having a pizza I didn't enjoy, which is like 2,000 calories. So anyways, needless to say, with the salt and everything, the weight's a little bit up this week, uh, this morning. It's like 81.7. Last week I was down to the low 80s, which is kind of where I need to be uh, because I have to weigh in with my gi on, which is my kind of like karate suit, what I wear for jujitsu. Uh, I need to be 82.3 kilos. Anyway. Today, we're gonna to do some blood flow restriction training. I'm gonna show you why it's awesome, what you can use it for, how, how to set it up, um, and why it's amazing for both building muscle, injury recovery, um, warm-ups, aerobic capacity, and something else that I'll probably remember in a minute. Let's get into it. Okay, BFR, blood flow restriction training. You're gonna need some form of bands. Get the proper ones, okay? So, my phone's ringing. Not bad, just in the middle of filming a video, what's cracking? I've got the camera rolling now, I couldn't be bothered to stop it, so you might as well say hello, everyone. Hello, <laughs> hello everyone. So yeah. Absolutely shredded weight he is right now. Oh, no, I'm talking about the fact that I got a Domino's last night and I was told to get to get to get a thin crust because it's only 500 calories of pizza. It comes on a tortilla. It was shit basically. Um, so my moral of the story is get a proper pizza next time. Wednesday we're with Wolverson and we're going to film this ultra bar, which is I believe they've got a barbell that's cut open so we can see all inside how amazing it is. And then yeah. Thursday we're at Nike HQ. Little impromptu chat with Leon there, little catch up, he's been on holiday. Okay, cool, so back to the story. Blood flow restriction or BFR bands. You can buy these off Amazon. The best way to do it, and which none of you are probably going to do, and I haven't either, is you get a little machine which measures your LOP, which is basically the restriction levels in, in, of blood flow in your muscles, and you can set it up perfect. If not, you probably want to aim for about a 7 out of 10 in terms of tightness. The problem with that is that different people's pain thresholds are different and that kind of stuff. So what I like about these bands that I just bought offline is they have numbers. So when you strap them up, you can take note of how it felt at number 8, at number 7, and you can set both sides the same so you know you're getting the same amount of tension on each band. You want to set them up nice and high on your legs. Today, I've been training a lot as of late. Calories have been low for this diet. And I've been doing jiu-jitsu and then running at night in the treadmill in the house or whatever it may be just to try and, and lose the pounds. As a result, it's been burning the candle at both ends and I'm tired. Um, I got, uh, when my, my signs of John, you're starting to do a little bit too much, is I get little, little white dots on the end of my tongue, like tongue ulcers, but they're not really ulcers, they're just a little bit sensitive. Um, I know that I'm doing too much. So another reason why I don't want to be squatting heavy today and really taxing that, taxing that central nervous system is another reason why we can use blood flow restriction because we're going to use 30, 20 to 30% of my 1RM. So I'm going to use about, my 1RM is 160. I'm going to use about 30 kilos on the bar and I'm going to box squat today. The protocol is going to be 30 reps, 30 seconds break, 
15 reps with 30 seconds break times three. Set of 30, three sets of 15. That's how we're gonna set up our BFR training. The pump should be insane. Get all that nutrients, that cell swelling, cell signaling, mTOR receptors, all that stuff happening that helps to recover, build muscle. In terms of recovery here, you can use a recovery protocol, but I'm talking more about injury recovery in this as well. This tune, epic. takes less than five minutes. Next up, my favorite workout that I always go back to, just a little pump sesh. What it is, is 10 rounds for time, 10 dumbbell bench press, 10 bicep curls. Sometimes I will do every two minutes, get my 10 dumbbell press in, and I'll get max calories on the bike if I want a bit more of a fitness dominated one. But today we're just going for a pump, just train legs, rules of specificity, means that if you were working this strength, it wouldn't make much sense to then go and do a lot of endurance type workouts because your body's gonna adapt to what you give it solely in that given time. Um, so if I'm doing heavy squats and that kind of stuff, I wouldn't be trying to do something more endurance based after. So we're just gonna keep it weightlifting. My weights for this are 22 and a half kilo dumbbells, which is too light, but my next one up is 35, and that's too heavy to get 10 sets of 10 in. I'm probably good for three sets of 10 with 35, if I'm honest. Um, and then bicep curls, nines. Nice and simple. Next one's up at 15s. Too heavy. That's what I've got. Let's get a pump on. Hey, uh, back on deck on my fly. Back. Uh, really on, really on my. Uh, really on. Pay some respect to my mindset. Hey, uh, Hair blowing smoke, catch a contact. Blow it up. Really mad, they can't stop us. Back on the scene, young conscious. Always been me. Oh, I wanted to go unbroken. Three rounds in, that's not happening. Way too wavy, gotta ride it. Pull up on you, yeah, we slide in. Make our eyes roll when I full on pump session. Legs, chest, and arms done. That's one thing I'll say for the crappy dominoes. Salty, salt gave me a pump. I struggled to get a pump, that was good. Woo! Okay, post workout yummies. Where am I? I'm here. I'm gonna have. Just some whey protein, optimal nutrition whey, with some ice, and put water in first, otherwise it'll all stick at the bottom. Normally when I have a shake like this, I'm probably gonna have oats in it or something, but we have family over, my wife's family, and my family over at the moment, so it means that the evenings are a little less in my control food-wise, so I'm just gonna save a few calories here and there, scoop and a half, um, here and there, you know, just to give me a little bit of buffer. What I don't want to do is be close on calories and it gets to the end of the day, and I'm a, I'm a bit short, I'm a, I'm a bit over it, it's, it's then just gonna annoy me. Um, it's less in my control. Whereas now, if I focus mostly on protein, simple rules in your dieting. Calories number one, protein intake number two. I'd argue fiber possibly number three, because fats and carbs have an inverse relationship. People like to have more carbs. If protein's set and calories are set, out of default, their fat's gonna go down. Someone likes a higher fat diet, protein set at constant, calories are set at constant, then their carbs are gonna be lower. So those two kind of work themselves out. If you're looking for performance, for specific things, uh, improving your metabolic flexibility, your ability to switch between fats and carbs, then there's other protocols to look inside that. For a general rule of thumb, keep it simple, keep it basics, because the basics are 90% of getting in shape. Calories number one, protein number two the rest kind of falls in. The reason I, I like to set a fiber number, obviously fiber is really important for you, for your digestive tract. Um, people think fiber doesn't do a job, it does actually. Uh, fiber doesn't get digested, um, insoluble fiber actually is worked as energy in your colon for um, epithelial cells and that kind of stuff. But anyway, you guys don't need to know that. Short chain fatty acids it creates, if you want to look that up and if you're kind of a bit nerdy like me. So that's the reason why I'm just having a protein shake. But don't overcomplicate shit, you don't need to.
He says after talking about fucking indigestible fiber and short chain fatty acids. Twat. I also just treated myself to some new kicks from Nike. Um, I want your opinion. Uh, it's a little bit different for me. They're a bit trendy. And normally I just go for functionality and what I think cool. But these are um, something crater, which is a type of heel. So they've got big heels. They're going to make me a good six foot two, these. But I think they're kind of cool. Like all like the, the heels all like recyclable. The heels like all recycled stuff. Can you even see them? But I think they're kind of cool, man. A little bit different. Uh, but like I say, they've got a massive wedge of a heel on them. So I'm going to be a good six foot two. Other thing that I've been doing for mine and Rosie's uh, first anniversary, one of the things she got me was this because she knows I love mythology and stuff. And it's just like a colouring in book. And I've just been doing it at like night time to chill out. Like when it was sunny, we were sleeping in a tent outside because it was so damn hot. So I would just kind of sit there at night and colour this in while Bobby was in bed. I don't know, it's been a lot of fun. I would 100% recommend a bit of colouring in to chill out. It's a busy day, just got a bunch of programming done. Okay, so one thing I didn't say, how kind of blood flow restriction works. The idea is, we're not trying to create a tourniquet, we definitely don't want to be cutting off blood supply. If we're doing it that type, we're gonna create bloody blood clots and stuff, that is not the goal. So if you're doing blood flow restriction, make sure you read the manual that comes with the product that you buy, um, because it does take some common sense as well. But what you're trying to do is reduce venous blood flow, so blood flow away from the muscles that you're working on the extremities, um, uh, but still allow blood flow arterially, so down into those muscles. So that way you get that blood pooling where you get a lot of blood in there. That creates cell swelling, allows the body to, or those muscles to be um, influenced by all the kind of reactions that are going on in that area due to the excess blood flow alongside the training. It will not replace strength training. But it's a great thing to do, well, like, I mean like heavy squats, but it's a great thing to do alongside them, particularly when injured, um, and especially if you're not wanting to hit that much load that many times a week because your joints are struggling or whatever it may be. So it's a really valuable tool that you can use um, and something that I've been quite enjoying. It's very fun to do on arm day as well. Um, I will start squatting, squatting again um, in the near future. I'll probably do a test or so next week and then I'll probably just lay off until after the end of this month when that comp is. If it does aggravate something, I don't want to be out for a few weeks before the comp. Anyway, there you go guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Slightly different one, a little bit of info on, on blood flow restriction and a little bit of what I've been up to in the previous week when I haven't seen you guys. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. Congratulations to the ladies, uh, the Lionesses for absolutely smashing the European Championships. You ladies, women, absolute freaking legends. Um, and I'll see you in the next one.